In this video, I'll be showing you how I made the cylinder head for my Kawasaki Z1 Super 6 and the cam cover from old Z900 parts. The first thing I have to do is inspect both the cylinder heads and decide which one I'm going to use for the middle portion and which one I'm going to use for the outer portion. This cylinder head on the left has broken fins on both sides, so I'll be cutting those off and using the centre portion. The black painted cylinder head has got great fins, not one broken, but the rev counter drive snapped off, which is perfect because I'll use the outside two cylinders on this one and cut out the middle. So what I'll do next is cut this cylinder head in half so I've got each pair of cylinders separate and on the other cylinder head I cut between cylinders 1 and 2 and 3 and 4 to keep the centre portion. I always start with the easy option so I pick up the black cylinder head and clamp it in the vise to cut down through the cam tunnel where the wall thickness is relatively thin. I'll be using my hacksaw with 18 TPI sand flex blades, they cut really well. Well that's the first half cut, that was quite easy. I loosen the vise and turn the cylinder head round, gripping it on the other half so I can cut down through the other side of the cam tunnel and separate the head into two bits. You have to be careful as you get near the end of the cut because you don't want to drop the cylinder head onto your toe or break any fins when it lands on the floor. And there we go, two bits push back together nicely. They're going to be separated and the centre portion of the other cylinder head placed in between them. With the second cylinder head gripped in the vise, I proceed to cut. This will take ages because I'm cutting between two cylinders and the metal is really, really thick. But you have to persevere and you get there in the end eventually. Well that took ages, but I finally got there and now it's off, so now I've got to do it all again. And it's off, and I'm so relieved at that, no more cutting for a while. So now I can put the three bits together to get a rough idea of what it's going to look like. It's still a tiny bit wide, because I've got to clean up the edges on my milling machine, and that's what we're going to do next. So I clamp the centre portion on, and put my big cutter in the horizontal bar and start cutting. This is a lot easier than filing. My milling machine makes light work of machining the end surfaces, but I have to go slow to make sure I don't break any fins with the cutting action. There's something really nice about operating a manual machine. You wind handles. It's much nicer than pushing buttons and then letting a computer do it for you. And also you become part of the machine and the feel goes from you straight into your job. With both sides of the central portion machined, I can remove it from my milling machine and mount one of the outer portions to repeat the process. And here we are, all three pieces machined nicely now. So I can press them together like that. And then I can put the camshaft mandrels in and tap them down tight. Just to have a look. It's amazing how everything lines up. That's two separate cylinder heads machined at different years and yet it all lines up. So now I strap them onto my Kawasaki S2354 to take them to the vapor blasters. I'll be straight over. See you in a bit. The vapor blasting's done, so I flew over to RD Cox and Son in Redden on my ST1100 to pick them up, and they looked amazing. They're all wrapped up nicely, and I can't wait to get them home. And here they are on the bench. 
They're like brand new castings. I'm well chuffed with that. So now we can get on with the welding process to join them together as one. The first thing I need to do is to put the two camshaft alignment mandrels into the camshaft bearings and tighten up the caps. There's 24 screws and it takes ages. With the camshaft alignment mandrels securely clamped in place, I use my hide mallet to tap the parts together. It's really important that there's no gaps, otherwise when you weld, it'll all draw and distort. I turn the head around and hit the other side as well, just to make sure. When I'm using my hammer, I'm sliding it along the bench, so when it hits the fins, it hits them square, and there's less chance of them breaking. With the three parts clamped up tight on the mandrels and tapped closely together, I turn the cylinder head over and check with my steel rule, and it's amazingly flat. I'm really impressed with that, considering it's two separate cylinder heads made two years apart in 1974 and 1976, and they're exactly the same. I'll be welding along the cylinder head face, just here, and then around the front of the cylinder head, the back of the cylinder head, around all the camshaft gullies, and I'm also going to weld up that rev counter drive that I don't need. When I weld the fins, I get in as far as I can so that I can dremel them back to make them look nice. And I'll have to weld underneath the camshaft mandrels once it's finished, so I'll clamp the cylinder head onto my milling machine to keep it square while I weld underneath the camshaft mandrels. Before I commit myself to welding, I think I'll just check it on the engine one last time to make sure it all fits. It should just drop on nice, hopefully. With anticipation, I lower the head on all the studs, but it drops straight on and lines up with the two dowels perfectly. With the head checked on the engine and the fit confirmed, it's now time to weld. So I fire up my barbecue so I can warm it up. But the trouble is, the head's too big and it only just fits. Well, it doesn't fit really. I have to do half at a time, but it does the job. I have to wear my heat resistant gloves to carry the head back into the garage. It's so hot. I don't waste any time and get straight into welding before it starts to cool down. I go around putting tacks all over the fins, all around the top, around the bottom to try and minimise distortion. So as this welds cool, it pulls it all true. This is something I've sort of learnt over the years really. There isn't an exact science on it. You just have to go with your feel and what you think's right. With all the welding done, I've now got a lot of filing ahead of me. So starting with my really coarse aluminium file, I start dressing the welds down. Now the trick is not to file the cylinder head, only to file the welds, otherwise you end up skimming loads of metal off that you don't want to do. It takes a while, but you get there in the end, and it always looks good. With all the weld file down, I check on my steel roll and it's still flat. That's a relief. The next thing I need to do is to re-drill the four holes that are at the welded joints where the welds leaked into the edges.
That's better. The holes are round again now. The next thing I need to do is to lift the cylinder head onto the milling machine table and clamp it down tight on its face to prevent further distortion when I weld underneath the camshaft mandrels. With the head securely clamped down tight, I remove the cam mandrels. With the camshaft mandrels removed, I can now weld round the camshaft gullies to complete the joint. With all the welding complete, I use my fine file to dress down the welds on the top surface and remove any burrs. The next thing I'm going to do is to cut up two camshaft covers to make one to fit the new cylinder head. This is almost an exact replica of what I've just done, using the same equipment and same tools. Just a lot easier, much less metal to cut and file. After a bit of filing, that piece fits perfect. So now I've just got to mill up the last bit to go on the front. With the milling complete, I bolt all the pieces in place so you can see where I have to weld now. So it's just a case of welding around with my TIG welder and then dressing down the welds with some grey coarse Abronet cloth and files to make it all blend in nice and be smooth. I really enjoy this part, going around deburring all the welds and blending it all in to make it look like it's not been welded. And then I use some very fine wet and dry paper on the end caps because they need to be buffed really shiny. With all four end caps polished up with wet and dry paper, I take the cam cover out into my shed to use my old vintage buffer to give it a proper nice shine. And here it is, the four end caps are all polished and it's all finished and ready to go. But I haven't got any cams, but that's another video. I hope you enjoyed the video. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already because there's more videos coming. And next time I'm going to be making camshafts. I've got some camshafts, but they don't fit because they have my four cylinder engine and this is now a six.